Hello Plant Tribe and welcome back to Plants, Pots, and Whatnots. If you're new here, my name is Nikki. Uh, if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. It is lovely to see you as always. So, today I asked you guys to ask, send me some questions like, I think it was like two weeks ago, and I had completely planned on doing the Q&A repot video that weekend, but things went sideways and that didn't happen. So. Here we are, and I'm gonna answer them now. Um, so I do have quite a few questions. Um, I do have a few plants to repot, so what I might do is split it in half. I don't know. I have three plants right here that I wanna repot in these new planters I got. I mean, they're not new to me. I do have six of these already, uh, but I did buy more because I love them and I need to get um, some of my plants up and off of surfaces so that some of the new plants that I bring in soon this season <laughs> will have a place to go so I absolutely love these things I get them on Amazon they are always linked in the description down below um, but they are self watering they have lots of aeration in the bottom and on the sides there if you can see that there you go um, they're a little dusty that's all right um, anyways, they do come with the hardware to hang them and everything, and really it's just as simple as screwing them into a wall and going, and that's it. Uh, you can water them in here, you can take them out if you want to be messy. You can actually take them right off the wall. It's like, they're really, really easy, and I absolutely love them. And they're modern looking, they're flat on the back so that they sit flush on the wall. Let's see if you can see that from here, hold on. Can you see that? Where can you... And you get the idea, right? Okay, anyway. Um, so I wanted to put some of my trailing plants in here. I have, I have this lipstick plant. I think it's called a Mona Lisa lipstick plant. And this thing I had almost left for dead. So I threw it in my greenhouse about six or eight months ago. And um, it has come back. And I don't know if you can see but it's got all kinds of blooms. Um, there's one coming down here. There's a whole ton of them right there. Um, some on the tip there. So I am a little nervous to repot it while it's just starting to bloom, but <clears throat> it's the beginning of the season and I want it to be in this pot for a while. And so we're gonna do it anyway, <sighs> cause why not? Uh, so the next plant that I want to put in these is this Tradescantia. Um, he's getting a little long and um, he actually went through uh, quite a few months ago now a bout of thrips, you know, like everything else in my house. Um, and I was able to get rid of him, but they did a number on some of his, um, his stems and whatnot. So, uh, but it is bouncing back. It has grown substantially. I did take some cuttings just in case, but he looks good. There's no pests on him currently. And so I thought I would get him trailing in a nice little white pot, like get the visual, you know? Cool. All right, so that's my next one. Oh. He also does like a lot of water, which is why I have him in that little glass thing. I just keep topping up the glass and he is like, soaking it in and then the last one that I'm gonna put in the third pot is this little tricolor Tradescantia he's super cute look at those little leaves anyway this is like the fastest growing plant I think I own it is crazy so yeah I just thought that would be really cute trailing down this beautiful white pot on my wall so that's a really long intro. Quite rambly. Shocker, Nikki. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started on that. I'm going to answer some questions. Some of them are plant related. Some of them are not. Some of them are a little just wacky. That's okay, because we're all a little wacky. Some more than others. <laughs> okay, guys, if that sounds like something you want to watch, go ahead and stick around and let's repot some crap. All right. around that's so awesome thank you very much 
Okay. Um, this video might get a little rambly. I don't know if I'm just going to stick to the questions or if I'll go off on a tangent and talk about something totally different. So that's just a forewarning. Um, if you've been around a while, that's probably no shock to you at all. <coughs> oh, that you, Rona? Okay. So I think the first one I'm going to do is this guy here. And so let me just move everything else out of the way. These are honestly like the best pots ever. Highly recommend. Two thumbs up. All right. This guy has been in that pot since I got him. It's actually the pot that I got it in. And so I think it's really, really time for some new fresh soil. So we'll just start, oh, that's a big chunk of bark. He doesn't need that. So yeah, he could really use some fresh soil. Just a new lease on life in general. Okay, so let's start with the first question. Oh, my glasses. How is your light bill at your house with all the grow lights, humidifiers, etc.? <laughs> Believe it or not, oh, yeah, it's probably about time. There is not a lick of soil in that pot. Let me just show you. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Bad plant mom. Okay. Um, I get asked this question a lot, uh, especially when I do um, like tours and things or like my grow light reviews and whatever. Uh, because yes, I do have a lot of grow lights. Um, I'm just kind of trying to tease the bottom here. I mean, it's inevitable when you do stuff like this, when they're really, really root bound, you're going to break roots. You're going to hear that God awful ripping sound and you're going to be like, Oh my God, it's going to happen. You can't really avoid it. You have to get some of those roots, uh, loosened up. So they kind of lose their muscle memory <laughs> just to get it not root bound and get them moving in different directions. What the hell is that? Like a whole new plant right there. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, lights, um, I do have a lot of grow lights, like a lot, um, but as I've explained before, the wall on my right hand side here, uh, is west facing and, um, so I'm, and there's a house just on the other side of my house. So even if there was a window there, I wouldn't probably get a whole lot of light. Um, oh, I'm just, just making a big old mess. Um, so yes, I have to supplement with quite a lot of grow lights because I am not blessed with a whole ton of natural light. Sad, but true fact. I think he's good just like that. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm just gonna fill him in here. He's gonna have so much more space. He's gonna be so happy. It's like moving day for plants. Okay. Um, my electro bill actually isn't that bad. Most of my lights are energy efficient or more energy efficient. They're LEDs. Um, I think I only have a couple that aren't. So, um, I actually haven't noticed a whole lot of change in my electric bill, which I really thought I would, but I haven't. Oh gosh, I'm going to jinx myself. Huh. Um, <clears throat> I also do have those three humidifiers running. Um, one of them, one of my Lavoids, the humidity sensor is off. So we have this one behind me here that you see creating a mist there behind me. Um, <clears throat> So that one gets manually turned on and off, but the other two that I have, the um, Ulec Holmes and the other Lavoit that I have, are set to 60%, so they come on and off. So it's not so bad, really. Um, it stays around 60% humidity in here, which seems to be like the perfect humidity level for ourselves and for our plants. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, yeah, to answer your question, no, I haven't really noticed too, too much of a difference at all. It's nothing like 
you know, astronomical. Like you get your bill and you're like, holy crap. Next question. Why did you get into plants? Um, I think I've answered this question before, but I'll give you a little brief rundown. Um, I grew up with my grandparents. Um, I was raised by my dad's parents and my grandparents, uh, who are amazing and wonderful and lovely, who were uh, amazing and wonderful people. Uh, I don't know where I'd be if it wasn't for them. And uh, they took me in when I was five months old and they were in their mid sixties, which is crazy. I can't even imagine. Like I watched my grandson for like a day like in an overnight sort of thing. And by the next day, I'm like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. And he's still like not walking or you know, anything like that. So um, I don't know how they did it. I, I don't know. Anyway, so my grandmother had the most neon green thumb. And I know I've explained this to you before, but I don't mind explaining it again because uh, I enjoy telling this story just because of how proud I am of them and how much I appreciate them and what they did for me. But <clears throat> anywho, uh, my grandma had a neon green thumb and she um, she had this massive uh, vegetable garden out back and then surrounding the entire property, she had flower beds. Like everywhere she could have like flower beds, she had them. Um, all out front, she had this gorgeous these gorgeous flowers and even at like gosh what was she like I think 75 80 she was still out there in her gardens and she would win awards from the city and stuff like that for how beautiful her gardens were and so <clears throat> she also had a lot of indoor plants if I recall um, a lot of like pothos and things like that I'd have to like go back in photos and I can't even really remember what she had but I think she had a lot of pothos um, anywho, so I think it just kind of like stuck with me. I think it's just because I've been around it for so long. Um, and this year I'm going to try to start some seeds. I did buy some seeds, which I'm really excited. So that's going to be another video. Um, I'm probably going to start one either today or tomorrow, a uh, video on that. I bought some succulent seeds, which I'm from a reputable, you guys are like, think you bought seeds online? Yes, I did. <laughs> But I bought them off a reputable Canadian seller. I did my research, I read the reviews, and we're good. So that doesn't necessarily mean that I will be capable of growing these things, but we're gonna give it the old college try. All right. Anyways, so yeah, I'm gonna be filming that soon because I'm pretty excited about doing that. Oh boy. Nikki, you made a mess. Okay, there is plant number one. I feel like that's stuck. Nope, it's not stuck. There. So what I'll do is I'll get them all potted up and then I'll take you over and I'll show you when I get them all hung up and what those look like. But, uh, oh, it's dirty. Might give her a little rinse first, maybe. Okay, moving on. I think I'm gonna do my lipstick plant next. It's the one that scares me the most. <laughs> <coughs> um, I think I finished answering that one, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Okay. Question number three. What just turned off? Did you hear that? That was weird. It was like a computer sound. You know when something, when you like speak to like, I don't know, like a voice thing and it stops listening, the sound that it makes when it stops listening, that's the sound it makes. No, I'm scared. <laughs> Whatever. <clears throat> okay. Question number three. Have you ever lied about the price of a plant that you bought to make it cheaper? <laughs> No, actually, I've been very, very honest um, with Jordan about the plants that I buy and how much they cost. Um, and I mean, he's totally okay with it. He knows that, you know, and I've said this before and I refuse to feel badly about it. <laughs> I work really hard for the money that I make. Um, 
And if I choose to spend that money on some expensive plants, then I don't feel guilty about it. <laughs> Plain and simple. Um, yeah. I mean, I know there is some controversy around that sort of thing. And here's my take on that is that if it's one thing for a creator to come on here and, you know, have a passion for the more expensive varieties of plants or the, what some people would call rare. They're not really rare. They're just expensive. Um, there's a difference between that and coming on here and being like, Oh, look at this new var variegated billetai that I just bought. Most of you can't afford like that is douchey. That is never something I would ever do. So there's a, there's a big difference there. So some people like what they like. Some people like the more expensive, rare, uncommon plants and that's okay. You know, there's people that like to watch for common plants, uh, videos about more common plants. There's people that like to watch more of the rare, uh, uncommon variety. That's okay so if you're a creator and you're watching this and you're hesitant about showing any of the plants that you're passionate about just because you think you might be judged because they are considered bougie or expensive you do you in the words of my friend brad you do you boo you know what i mean don't ever let anyone and this goes to any of you for anything never let anyone make you feel badly for doing something that you love. Never let somebody make you feel badly about buying something that you're passionate about. As long as it's healthy and isn't gonna kill you, of course. But you know what I mean, okay? So that's been bothering me for a while. I needed to get it off my shoulders. Um, I like what I like, you like what you like, and nobody should be that damn judgy. Plain and simple. Okay, rant over. Let's mess up this plant. <laughs> really scared, actually. I'm gonna set that aside. <clears throat> okay, how did I even get on that rant? What was the question? Oh, have you ever lied? <laughs> See what I mean? I go off on a tangent and that's what happens. Um, <sighs> I'm scared. Okay, so I watched, whose video was that on? I think it was uh, Maddie's, uh, Ants in My Plant. She did a little collab video on her channel. And it was, uh, I totally missed the boat on it, but it was, if you were a plant, like what's your spirit plant? Like what plant do you resonate with and makes you think about you and how does it relate to you? And I thought that was kind of cute. And there was one on there. Oh my gosh, who was it? Terracotta DC. <clears throat> cute as a button so sweet uh, but she had the plant that she showed on her channel uh, or on on her part of the video was a lipstick plant and it was beautiful beautiful and I was like oh mine could be like that if I just paid more attention to it so it was at that moment <laughs> where I decided that this plant was going to get more of my attention because that plant is plant goals. <laughs> okay. It's not bad. It, these don't have like, they're very, very fine root. Oh, very, very fine roots. I'm going to leave most of that on. I don't want to mess with it too, too much. We will get her settled right down in here. This is going to be so nice. I'm so excited. There's some dead wood on here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is a funny question. This question came from Casey from Plant with Casey. She, by the way, is like the cutest thing. She's so incredibly sweet. Um, and just a lovely, amazing, wonderful human. Um, <laughs> this question's so funny. Okay. Would you rather have to fight a toothless tiger that was just a bit stronger than you or never wear shoes again? So, so as I'm like 
collecting these questions and writing them out on my little notepad here. I was thinking about that and I was like, you know, it doesn't seem like the obvious answer, but hook me up with the tiger for sure. I would rather fight a tiger. I'll take on the claws and whatever. Um, <clears throat> I am not a barefoot person. I can't walk. Like I live in my flip flops, like my slides. Um, so, and I don't like socks. So winter I hate because I have to put real footwear on and it's really annoying. Um, <clears throat> but you're not going to sit in there straight. Okay. All right. Um, as you know, I live in Canada. I wouldn't last five seconds without footwear. So, and I don't, even in the summer, I don't like walking barefoot. I'm, I'm just weird like that. Like I never know what I'm going to step on. Plus, because I don't do that often, my feet are really sensitive. So when I do step on like, like little pebbles, like I see people, cause we camp in our trailer and there'll be people like walking down the laneway in like bare feet and I'm like watching them walk and doing one of these because I'm like, oh God, rocks, you're going to step on some, uh. mm. <laughs> anyway, sorry. So yeah, hook me up with the tiger. I'll fight that tiger, punch it right in the mouth. Aw, that's sad. It would probably eat me, so we won't feel bad for the tiger. Oh, thank you for the question, Casey. That was quite, that was quite funny. <clears throat> okay, next question. Do you miss your plants? That's a good question. So, um, yes and no. My humidifiers are more than enough humidity for my plants. Um, you have to be really careful when it comes to humidity and moisture. <clears throat> it is extremely easy to breed any sort of bacteria in overly moist conditions, especially when you don't have proper air circulation. Um, and that's one of the things that I'm working on right now is more air circulation in here. Um, so I do have the fan that's right above me that we keep on high most of the time. So it's moving the air but some of the plants just around the corner and on the far side behind me here don't quite get enough air circulation as I would like. So I actually have two small little tower fans coming tomorrow and those um, will just help with a little bit more air circulation. So um, the only plant that I missed, I would say is probably my Dubaya and that's basically um, only because I'm trying to encourage it to, so I try to keep the moss behind it moist so that moist, worst word in the world, um, so that I can encourage it to cling to the, the moss board. Um, actually that leads me into another question. Oh, it's actually the next question. Um, so yeah, that's the only plant that I really would say that I missed. Other than that, you have to be really, really careful with humidity and any kind of moisture. <clears throat> um, is it okay to have my humidifier blowing right at my plants? Will it cause damage? Yeah, it will. Um, and I say that because I've experienced it. So what happens, um, and I'm sure this isn't all plants, uh, but especially if you have um, some of the big philodendrons and that kind of thing. Um, for example, this one right behind me um, has been the victim of too much humidity on a couple occasions. And actually, it took me a while to figure out what it was. So eventually I was like, oh! <sighs> um, so what can happen if you get your plant... Um, or if your plant's got too much humidity, is that it does build up in the leaves. So you can see the leftover residual damage here from that happening on this older leaf. Um, but water will actually build up in the leaf. It will sit on the leaf. It will cause bacteria. It will cause yellowing. 
um, and eventually it will kill the leaf entirely. So I definitely do not recommend pointing a humidifier directly at a plant. Um, have it in the general vicinity and keep the air circulating. That is my advice. And is that all I wanted to say about that? I don't know. Probably. Just be careful with it, you know? It's better to err on the side of caution. I know some people don't use humidifiers at all. Now, having said that, they don't live in Canada where they have to have heat on a lot of the time. Uh, or some people just live in really dry climates uh, and have to have the humidity. Ivy, thank you. Hey. There is my lipstick plant. Yay! There's his little... Oop. Went sideways there, pal. Come on. Uh. Alright. Plant number two. Okay. The last plant here... I'm gonna... Oh, I need soil in here first. Okay, next question. This one's from my friend Paula. What are your latest plant problems? Uh, more plants, more, sorry, more plants, more problems. Know what I'm saying? It's always something, always something. When you have a large collection, <clears throat> it's not often that there's like a time when everything is just going peachy keen. Um... Right now, I have a couple plants in my little greenhouse that are going through some things. Um, if you guys remember my philodendron Atabacalensi, um, I got it <clears throat> last summer. Yeah, I got it last summer and it literally has done nothing. So I was like, all right, it's time to pull in the big guns. So I put it in my little greenhouse where it's about 80, 88% humidity, I think. And I looked yesterday <clears throat> and there is a new leaf growing on it. So I am so jazzed about that. So excited because literally I haven't gotten like everything has gotten a new leaf since I got it. Everything except that plant. And I was so excited to get it and see it grow and then it like didn't. <laughs> so, so that was really disappointing. Um, <clears throat> anyways, but it is growing. So that was one of my problem plants, but we are fixing that problem. Um, I don't know if I've, I know that I've told some people in particular and I should have done a video on this. I wasn't thinking. So I don't know if anyone's noticed, but you probably haven't seen my Anthurium forgetii in a while. <laughs> for, for those of you who have been here a while, you're probably like, oh my God, I didn't even notice. Yeah, I remember now you had one. I did, I had this gorgeous, beautiful one. Here's a picture of what <laughs> it looked like. It was huge and it was beautiful. And then, God, and in nowhere, it comes down with some sort of weird bacteria. <clears throat> We couldn't figure out what it was. It was the oddest thing. And then within like three days, the leaves completely fell off. <clears throat> and I was devastated. <clears throat> because this plant was stunning. And I was like, I can't give up on it. I took it out of the pot. The roots were still great. So I washed everything down. I put it in sphagnum moss and I put it in a Ziploc bag and I stuck it in my greenhouse. And you know, every couple of weeks I would open it up, make sure that it was still moist in there and all that. And lo and behold, this was a while ago now, like I'm talking at least five, six months ago, if not more. Um, and so, where's my spoon? So anyways, it finally grew a new leaf. Uh, it's not a good leaf, it's not a healthy leaf, 
but it is a leaf nonetheless. I'll put a picture in here of what it looks like, but it is growing. That's a great sign. Um, like I said, the roots really healthy. So I knew that I couldn't give up on this plant. Um, and I didn't, and I am so thankful that I didn't just go, well, whatever, and toss it. I took the time. I reached out to um, my friends, Bryce and Christian at House of Monstera, and um, they kind of confirmed that I was taking the right steps and, and whatever, because you know I sent them pictures of the roots. I'm like, the roots look healthy. I really don't know. Here's my thoughts. I'm going to stick it in a bag and spag moss in the greenhouse. They're like, yep, do it up and it worked and so it's in there right now it's got that one little weird leaf <clears throat> and then it actually is growing another separate little sprout off the node and i don't know whether it's going to be like a separate like stem or if it's going to be another leaf it doesn't look like another leaf so i don't know we'll see um so that is definitely a problematic plant um but i will get her back to being gorgeous and beautiful again it's just gonna take some time but it, that's just all the more fun when it does start to you know flourish again and then like what a good feeling that you know I nurtured that baby back literally from the brink of death and or whatever the heck was wrong with it <clears throat> still don't know um what else am I having problems with I think <sighs> he, somebody asked me today and I haven't gotten back to her yet because I don't even know what to tell her. So somebody asked me today, and if you're watching, <laughs> I will message you back before you see this video anyways, but um, my pink princess philodendrons, like, <sighs> tell me if you guys have issues with your pink princess philodendrons because the leaves just keep coming out weird. And by weird, I mean all kinds of different things. The last two leaves on the one on my Home Depot rack came out missing the tops. Don't understand. They get light, <laughs> they get enough humidity that that shouldn't happen. Um, sometimes they come out all weird and wrinkly. Like I just can't get a nice pink princess leaf. I mean, not only that, but it's annoying me because I can't get a nice pink color on any of my princess plants <sighs> but patience patience I know that some people have had you know a mostly green plant for a while with you know some pink fleck sort of thing and then the pink I don't want to say it develops over time because that's not the norm um, but it's happened so I'm trying to be patient with it. I'm trying to I'm just, I'm trying things <laughs> because I just, you guys know, I've had this vision of this gorgeous, huge pink princess in a floor pot growing up in a court, like just something stunning. And that's why I have, I think five or six <laughs> pink princess plants because I just want this beautiful, gorgeous, full pink plant. And at this point, it's just like, I'm never going to get there. Like they're growing leaves and everything. They're just weird in one way or another. I don't get it. Anywho, that's my pink princess rant. Other than that, oh, this is weird. So, yes, no, last week, I think, I was looking at some plants on my Home Depot racks. You know, you're making the rounds. You're looking at all your plants. I'm making them and, you know, saying good morning and good night and all that. There's the last one. Yay. They need a good watering in. So anyway, I was looking around at my Home Depot racks and this little white thing fluttered by in front of my eyeballs. So at first I was like, maybe it's just a fuzz. It kind of just looked like a fluffy. Just kind of moseying its way through the air current, but no, <clears throat> it turns out <laughs> that it was a white fly. Like, where does that even come from? I haven't brought plants in. Um, I, the only thing I can think of it must, because we have 
we've there's been a couple nice days and I've had the back patio door open so maybe they've come through that but at this time of year I don't I don't know like it's not warm enough for a whole lot of bugs to be out yet anyways I haven't seen a whole lot of them and so cool little fun fact is my little butterwort you know my little carnivorous plant that kind of looks like I'll put a picture right here um, kind of looks like a succulent that is actually catching them there's like five of these little white flies on that plant so I'm like you do your thing buddy thank you because they're really really difficult to see they're really really tiny and they honestly look like a teeny tiny little white fuzz that's all I can really explain to them but um, if you get near them or blow on them they they'll scatter they kind of like eh, freak out and fly so that's how you know the difference between a tiny white fuzz and a tiny white fly okay well I'm gonna wrap this up I actually do have quite a few more plants to repot I do need to repot my ginormous gloriosum um, they crawl and it has crawled its way to the edge of the pot and needs to be reconfigured <laughs> So I want to repot that. Um, I also have those seeds that I want to get started. So I'm going to do that as well. I do have an informational video coming up soon that I am excited to do for you guys. It's a video that I actually haven't seen anyone do. That doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. I just haven't seen it. So I'm really jazzed about that. <clears throat> and um, what else? Oh my goodness. I just, I have so many so many ideas in my head I just need to find the time and the energy and the get up and go to go ahead and get these filmed for you guys so yeah that's pretty much the end of this video I think hey Nikki you're rambling shut up oh I also have um, a review video coming up for you um, I'm just in the the testing phase right now so I'll get that out here in the next probably week so there's that yeah okay I'll stop rambling now thank you guys so much for watching thank you all for your questions I do have a few more questions so maybe I'll save that for the repot of my gloriosum um, I also have to repot my little pink splash too I'm rambling again okay all right guys thank you so much for liking and watching and commenting and subscribing if you haven't subscribed yet please go ahead and do so it is a huge help to my channel and I definitely appreciate it all right you guys have a great day night week month and year I love you all to bitty bits and I will see you in the next one Mwah!